and I invite you, you can sit there for the next couple minutes and see if you can build this. I've already tried many times. <laughs> so, when given a square, we have to rule out an adjacent. So, what I have to rule out is I have to rule out Because once I put the A's, the A's, you had no interlock. The A's, you could subdivide these blocks around the A's and count, and count it. I can't do that technique here, but I have to be able to count these arrangements of letters that don't appear, and then I got to rule them out. Okay, so the question is how do I do that? I mean, I've been experimenting with inclusion, exclusion. I'm thinking you might even be able to do what's called a hyperblock structure, but that's, but what's going to happen is when you have a final piece, you have to count how many pieces. But it's, a, it's tricky. I mean, then that's the whole key. That's what's remaining to do. How do I count these things that don't have these, that I call them, well, I call these bulge words, but they don't have these nice adjacency conditions. So that's what I have to rule out. Because then you have to look at them, and there should be a single letter that appears, and that letter at least must be circled. But you want a formula for n by n, right? Yeah. In addition to the other conditions? Yep. Yeah, so first I even want to get a formula that even counts, rules out from the bell numbers, these things. No, this seems very hard in general. It is. <laughs> so, no, M by N, by M fixed. Yeah, well, first I was even looking at 2 by N. Yeah, no, this is not the body if you do it fixed by N. Yeah, you can fix by, one of them. I, mean, I was trying by thin. Yeah, I was even trying fixing in one of them. Sense. I have some nasty recurrence formulas, but it has to be more elegant. No, it seems very impossible because. Yeah. It's, uh, even harder than. Yeah, I was at least hoping maybe I could do it for like two by n and then three by n and four by n. Yeah, no, this is tractable, but n, n by n is intractable. Yeah, it because is. it's harder than the number. Yeah, the only consolation is I'm convinced the bigger and bigger your m is, there's going to be fewer and fewer of these, so that the upper bound counts will be. Oh yeah, you can have a bond, but not check formula. Yeah, but I'd love to get at least get this part at least for two, three, and four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's by the ultimate goal. And that's where we're stuck at. Now, I'm guessing this is close to about a minute left over then. Sure. Yeah, four minutes left. Four line is left over. Well, oh, I we can have more questions. Well, I don't know if anybody has any questions. <laughs> okay, so we'll end this formally? And yeah, if you want to end this formally. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, a beautiful talk, a really beautiful generating functions. Uh, yes. Are there any questions? Yes. Yes. <coughs> 
So about the transition matrix, mm -hmm. I was wondering for these cubes, it would be natural to think of some transition cube matrix, hypermatrix. I mean, have you thought about that? You mean cube variables? So matrix is just a, a, a square you fill up with numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here I would imagine that you have a cube and fill up with numbers or letters associated to these, these cubes. Uh, have you, I mean... Well, I could describe how I do a transition matrix. I mean, it's a gluing procedure. I don't think that's his question. I think you're, you're asking about a four-dimensional analog. Yes. I don't know. I've never thought about it. I mean, you can kind of, I know you can keep going higher and higher. Because if it's hard enough, it's hard enough. Yeah, it's hard enough. I like to finish three. I think once I understand how to do the three, I mean, the four, I mean, yes, the symmetry part for any four-dimensional stuff, I can do this for any dimension now, the symmetry. Okay. I can understand how that works. When it goes to four dimensions, you have to look at cubes, and you have to look at reflections and symmetries for the cube, but I mean, so the symmetry part isn't hard. It's always coming down to this thing. They were the hardest formulas when I did the dissertation thing. They were the nastiest looking things. Yeah, I have a challenge for you because uh -oh. this beautiful exponential dynamic functions that you got mm -hmm. was e to the power something. Yes. So I didn't quite see how to do it directly. So it's hence, like with the bare numbers, mm -hmm. it's just a set partitions, the atoms, mm -hmm. that's non empty sets. Mm -hmm. So this is obvious. But in your case, it, it was not obvious how to get the atomic objects that it can be viewed as a labeled connected sets, labeled collect, labeled uh, objects, labeled sets of sets. So, yes, meaning, it could be. so these hints, there's, there's something behind it. They can simplify it. Oh, I wouldn't it. doubt it. I, you know, I wouldn't doubt to some extent. Yeah, yeah that's kind Maybe of true. And, and I have an extra labeling with the circle. That's yeah. a special extra. I, you know, I wouldn't doubt that. I don't know. I just thought these, I like to build things, so that's yeah. how I started to see it. Yeah. I mean, I think you're right. It might be a slicker way to do it, yes. And that's and what somebody, but you can do it with fixed points, yes. Yeah. And that's what somebody did yeah. you when know, one of their comments, when one of the referees made that's about what you're saying, yes. You could, because those first three formulas, in fact, all these three formulas, for the R, and that could be exactly what his, one of the comments they said. All these three formulas for H, and this R, all in one class, and then you have to, have to look at how many fixed points, involutions, how many fixed points you have, yeah. and that's exactly, so yes, you can do it very slickly. Basically, you take this, the master formula is this, and you can manipulate everything from that by looking at the, with the number of involutions. So you're right, there's a really quick way to do this. It's not how I saw it, but oh. yeah, there's a comment to be made. So H, 2N is a special case of that, and R, 2N plus 1 is a special case of that. It's all based from that, based on the involutions. Yeah, this is the play. Well, that's exhausting again. Thank you.